I'm John Marie Asis Aranya from BIT4A FSM. So for today's lesson, we gonna talk about warehousing. Introduction. In the previous topics, you have learned that planning your shop layout in terms of the design, location, and its physical asset, such as different machine and equipment, is very important. In this lesson, another process is discussed. It is the foundation of every success of any business, especially in a manufacturing business. It's an area that could either destroy your business or propel it into something customers trust time and time again. Get, getting it right in not a simple task, that's why we put together this guide to basic warehouse processes and management. We cover the basics needed to run a warehouse from how to arrange it, the basic receiving, picking, and to shipping. So what is the difference between a warehouse and warehousing? A warehouse is a place used for the storage of a A warehouse is a place used for the storage of accumulation of goods while warehousing is the, is the act of storing goods that will be sold distributed later. It is the process of physical storing, monitoring and safekeeping of goods. A warehouse is used inter interchangeably a warehouse is used interchangeably to distribution centers, but technically, a warehouse provides nothing more than a storage. A distribution center, on the, on the other hand, stores product but also fulfills orders. The photo, sh the photo shows the typic the tip the photo shows a typical warehouse with storage equipment such as racking system. And loading and unloading area is called the docks. At the right of the docks, especially doors are placed for the employees since docks are not intended for human entry point for the warehouse. So, the picture below is an example of a warehouse. Warehouse management. It is the act of organizing and controlling everything within your warehouse and making sure it all runs in most optical way possible. This includes having a maintaining the appropriate equipment. Second, managing a new stock coming into the facility. Third, picking, packing, in order of shipping and of shipping of order, tracking and improving overall warehouse performance. Fifth, most high growth retailers would use automate automation tools such as as Oracle and SAP. Warehousing process. Warehousing has six common steps to follow. These steps are these steps may only vary if the company or organization is using a different style of warehouse process. Thus, the following steps is generally used by most of the industrial companies nowadays. Number one, we have receiving of goods. That's the first step in this warehousing process is basically the receiving of goods in the docks. The process of receiving involves the, unfold, the unloading of goods from the transport equipment and the, and the inspection of received goods. Two, we have put away. The second step of the warehousing process is the put away. This is the process that first involves the quality checking of all goods received and moving, moving it away from the storage. Third, we have the storage. This is the process of storing and safekeeping the goods. Goods are monitored by its quality, quantity, and, and its life, lifespan to the market. 5. We have shipping preparation. After, after the picking process, warehousemen prepare the goods at the shipping docks. Goods are, the, goods are then inspected, packed, labeled, scheduled, and stocked on a pallet ready for shipping. 6. Shipping. This step is the last step of warehousing where goods are loaded on the transport equipment to be shipped on the, lo uh, on the customer's location. So the figure below shows the warehousing process. So for the input, we have receiving of goods. For the output, we have the uh, shipping. So the sa warehouse process, we have put away, 
next is storage, next order picking, and next is shipping preparation. Arranging the warehouse. Probably, the most important step in optimizing your warehouse operation is making sure you have everything in there arranged in the most efficient way. Planning your warehouse arrangement is centered or on balancing two things. One, providing enough storage space for your inventory while still having enough working space for staff to move around and complete their task. With this, it is very important to design your warehouse with the following requirements. First, receiving new stock area. Second, unpacking area. Third, packing area. Fourth, shipping station. Fifth, excess, obsolete stock area. Sixth, warehouse office. And lastly, we have main storage area. These areas, these areas will only be changed depending on the goods to be stuck inside the warehouse. It's a tricky process to manage especially when dealing with a limited space so it's best to sketch out your warehouse layout to scale before setting it up or changing what you already have. Space and maneuverability is the key to remember the pe Space and maneuverability is the key things to remember. The pickers or the warehouse men needs to be able to walk up and down aisle without getting in, in each other's way and should also have enough room to actually fix item. The layout of the warehouse can be patterned based on the product, operation, or combination type. Warehousing element and strategies. Warehousing strategies changes based on the demand of existing market of the product a company is storing. This strategy changes also because of the season and most importantly, it changes because of the marketing power and capacities of the business. These are no perfect strategies in warehousing and there are no fixed strategies. The following strategies are for the whole warehousing process. One, we have color coding. This strategy helps the warehouse men identify the condition and the whereabouts of the goods in stocks. It helps by reducing confusion on orders and it gives an orderly manner when loading and unloading and even picking the goods. 2. We have use of software and latest logistics technologies. If a business owns the best quality of machines, equipment, and the best warehouse site, they have the competitive advantage. Software such as warehouse management system or even, or even a barcode increases productivity. Third, we have replen replenishment. This is a common strategy in all warehousing. This strategy basically monitors all the stocks of the warehouse and treat it with a periodic inventory approach. A periodic approach is when all, all goods in the warehouse are checked time to time. Four, we have ABC classification. This strategy basically classifies product into three goods. Into three. Goods, goods A for goods that have high value, good B for goods that have average value, and lastly, good C for goods that are actually obsolete or have the lowest value. So fifth, we have managing of ordering releases process. The goal here is to maximize the volume of orders you can ship ac accurately in a day. To gain efficiently, try and group process processes. Try to do pick runs in the warehouse and coordinate the staff and equipment resources to get the job done more efficiently. So six, we have outsourcing. This strategy is commonly used for businesses to increase their productivity. Instead of minding the transport transportation facilities for your goods, it is always better to, us to outsource it and focus more on the warehousing of your business especially if your business is involved hazardous goods or fisherable goods. So 7. We have cross docking. Businesses tend to use the cross docking to increase the productivity of the operations. The process shows that without cross docking, goods are loaded to the transportation equipment and will go straight to the delivery address of the customer without truly inspecting the product while if it used with cross docking. 
transportation facilities will deliver goods and sort if first at the distribution center, then to retail store or customer. So, eight, we have basic labeling. The, base, the best way to label goods in warehouse is by using simple alphanumeric combination. This is important because it lessens the time of the pickers or warehouse men to locate uh, and decipher, decipher stocks. Start by simply including labels for specific rows, shelves, and then exact bin lo or location. The illustration one below shows a simple labeling strategy. So 9, we have picking system. We all know the process of picking inside the warehouse, but different picking strategies are applied to most of the medium to large retailers or wholesalers since it increase, increases productivity. So these are the four main picking system or methods used by medium to large retailers. So first, we have single order. Best picking method, it is where a picker will pick one order at a time. In it's entirely before moving on the next, onto the next. It is best for retailers just ter starting out that aren't yet big enough to gain the benefits of a more complex picking methods. Not applicable to not applicable to uh, business business that reaches mis minimum of twenty cust customers. So second, we have batch picking. It is when a picker is assigned a batch consistently of a number of orders, pick them all in one go, and then returns to the packing desk. The pickers will then get assigned a new batch to pick. The number of orders allocated to each is batch in generally between 10 and 30, and will also greatly depend on the physical size of the product. This, pack, this picking method is best for high cost, high number of orders with single or low number of product per order. Avoid this method if you have high number of product per num, per order. Next, we have zone picking. It is when pickers are assigned on a specific area. Areas where they are assigned will be only area where can they pick the stocks. An order is passed through all areas to have any required items added to it by pickers in that zone before being returned to a packing desk. So next we have wave picking. It is somewhat the same when picking zone. When zone picking, the difference is also zone pick all the time. Various items are picked in the according zone and are given to a packer who will consolidate and separate picks for each other. So next, we have packing. You have learned on the previous topic about packing or packaging. That is an opportuni opportunity to have completely sure that you're sending the right products to the right customer and in the most efficient way. So things to consider in packing processes. <laughs> things to consider in the packing process. So one, we have box size. Dep besides from the weight of the package, the size of the box cont contributes to the cost of the business. So number two, we have packing materials. Though choosing the most appropri appropriate packaging material to a product is essential element in the packing process because it, it, it keeps the product protected during transit, minimizing the, the damage and weight to the package. So common packing materials. So one, we have air pillow. Plastic bag filled with air, very lightweight and good protection but required to work to inflate. So two, we have shredded wool. A loose fill wool which is lightened but limited shock protection. So third, we have packing peanuts. A biodegradable or recycled foam peanuts. So next, we have bubble wrap. Two layers wrap around product using tape to hold. Shredded paper. Cheap and lightweight but limited protection. Next, we have crunch paper. From paper dispenser and crunched by packer. So 11, we have shipping orders. Shipping is the final process of warehousing. It is done with a detailed attention to maintain productivity and quality of the product as well. So the following step can help to achieve the smooth flow of shipping your product. One, we have weight the package. 
Weighing of pa- you weighing your package is important since it determines the cost of the package in shipping and also determining what transportation facility to use as well especially if the products or items are huge and weigh too much. Second, we have pin out relevant say, shipping label. Documents such as sway bills, sales invoice, delivery receipt, or etc. are important since it provides the initial information about the packing your shipping. Third, we have marking order. Some business use computer software to maintain the record of their product, especially those are the to be shipped and on the process of shipping. Upon shipping such orders, the order product should be marked on the software for monitoring purposes. Four, we have sent out shipping confirmation. This is usually done by logistic personnel to notify people in charge that an item will be shipped. This is, this is essential since it gives a go signal when to ship, where to ship, when to receive the items or product. So again, I am Jomari Asis Aranya from BIT4A FSM. Thank you for listening.